Earth fault or ground fault monitors detect faults on the field windings of motors and generators with brushless exciters. On generators, a field ground fault, also known as an earth fault, is defined as an insulation degradation or breakdown that can lead to an electrical connection between the field winding on the rotor and the rotor forging. This electrical connection can potentially lead to catastrophic failure over time. Conventional wisdom tells us that two or more faults along the field winding will divert current from the excitation circuit in the rotor forging, resulting in severe damage or destruction of the rotor. In this first photo, we see an example of the slots from a rotor that have been destroyed from the burning of the steel caused by a ground fault where there were two connections. Although conventional wisdom says it takes two faults to really damage the machine, it is possible that even a single fault can be very damaging. Shown is an example of the inside of a retaining ring where there was a single fault resulting from a turn-to-turn -turn short that arced, burned the insulation, and then burned into the inside of the retaining ring. In this case, the retaining ring needed to be replaced. You can see that in either case, single or multiple faults, you can have severe damage. If the rotor should need to be replaced, it would likely mean a long, forced outage, which often comes at a high cost. For this reason, it is very important that you detect the onset of ground faults. Various types of ground detection systems are available for generators and motors. There are a few essential elements in any field ground detection system. First is a means of access to the rotor so that data can be collected and then communicated from the rotor. If you have a brushed exciter with a collector ring, the access is through the brushes, the collector ring, and a ground brush. With brushless exciters and brushless generators, the problem of access is particularly difficult. We'll talk more about this later. You will also need a means of detecting ground faults on the rotor. There are two different methods that we will discuss in detail later. Finally, you need a way of interfacing with the operator to give them the best information possible to make the decisions that they need to make and in the event of a ground fault. So let's take a look at the means of gaining access on a brushless exciter. From the beginning days of brushless exciters, having a ground detector was a problem because getting access to the rotor was challenging. There are several methods that have been used. A lot of machines use a slip ring that contacts the rotor and allows for ground fault detection. These typically have a brush actuator that contacts the rotor for a few moments, usually only once or twice a day. It checks for ground faults and then disconnects, so it is a non-continuous measurement. And in addition, the slip rings tend not to be very reliable. Another method is an optical or infrared module that is mounted on the rotor. This is an electronic circuit that is powered when excitation comes on, so it is continuous when the unit is online, but it is not operational before you turn excitation on. Its limitation is the reliability of the optical communication. Typically, the LED is turned on during normal operation, but when a ground fault is detected, the LED turns off. Of course, there are a lot of reasons besides a ground fault that the LED might turn off. For example, it can become contaminated by dirt or oil, or the circuit can fail. Those conditions would cause a false alarm. The third method used in Acumetric's FREM system is, in, is inductive powered radio frequency telemetry. It is a continuous method even when the generator is turned off and it is also the most reliable means of data communication off of rotors. So once you have access to the rotor, how do you detect a ground fault? A ground fault can be modeled as a resistance between some location on the field winding and the rotor forging. First, we will look at the classical method that almost all ground fault detectors use to detect ground faults. Typically, a detector makes a connection to the rotor forging and then to some location on the excitation circuit, in most cases the negative terminal. That detector provides an injection voltage that forces the negative side of the field to be slightly more positive than rotor ground. There is also a current detection circuit that senses when current flow exceeds some fixed threshold. When the current flow exceeds that threshold, it is assumed there is a ground fault and an alarm is transmitted to the operator. This is the typical method that has been used for many years in generators. 
This method does have a serious limitation. The resistance threshold that causes an alarm depends on the location of the fault. The detector becomes more sensitive as the location of the fault is closer to the positive end of the field. A severe fault near the negative side may go unnoticed, while a slight fault on the positive side will cause an alarm. Because of this, this type of system is subject to false alarms. False alarms not only serve to waste time and cause operators to lose confidence in the system. Also, there is no way of knowing the location or severity of the fault in this type of system. A more advanced method of ground fault detection using a pulse injection method, known as EFREM, is available from Acumetrics. Rather than injecting a DC voltage, we inject a low frequency pulse between the field winding and the negative excitation. We measure the current as the pulse goes up and down. From that information, we can fully characterize the fault. An alarm is triggered at a specified fault severity no matter where the fault is located. This method provides both the location of the fault and the fault severity. We also measure field voltage, which is typically unavailable on a brushless exciter, and that is another useful piece of information that comes along with this kind of detector. So finally, let's look at the possible interfaces for, for reporting data to the operator. At the very minimum, you need the ground fault alarm, and with a classical ground fault system, that is in fact what you get. However, you get no other information, so there isn't anything to help you understand if the alarm is legitimate or if you should shut down. Adding diagnostics that verify the proper ground detector operation or provide an alarm when the unit malfunctions gives the operator further confidence that he is really protected. And finally, having additional information, like quantitative measurements for health or condition monitoring, gives the operator a lot more insight to make the appropriate decision. These are the kinds of interfaces that are much better than just a simple ground fault alarm, and all of these are available with Acumetrics Earth Fault Resistance Monitor. Acumetrics AT8000 FREM system communicates and is powered by inductive powered radio frequency telemetry. The system detects ground faults and continually measures field insulation resistance, fault location, and field excitation voltage. Two different alarm outputs allow users to set custom resistance thresholds. Also included is a malfunction alarm. There are two 4 to 20 milliamp analog outputs for reporting fault resistance and field excitation voltage, and included software allows for historical archiving of data so that trends can be examined. Invest in Acumetrics ground detection or monitoring systems to protect your motors and generators from catastrophic failure or unplanned downtime. For more information, visit our website, send us an email, or give us a call.